I like the feeling of the cold creamy yogurt on my lips. I just realized this looks really inappropriate. Welcome to my channel. Hi Shani Fannies, welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hey Shani, hi! So today what I wanted to talk about is kind of a hard subject for me to talk about, but it's something that I've been looking for people to have a conversation about and not a lot of people have done that. So I'm like, ooh, maybe I'll open the conversation on my channel. So I'm gonna do that. Please keep the comments respectful between you guys and let's just have an open conversation because I'd love to hear um, your thoughts on this and your experiences on this and I'm gonna share with you my experience as well. So this video is gonna be about how my sexuality affected my eating disorder. If you're new around here, I have had an eating disorder since I was five years old, different eating disorders, and I came out as bisexual last year to you guys, um, and my family and husband was long before that. And um, that means that I spent 34, 33 years, I think, uh, keeping it to myself, and it contributed a lot to my eating disorder, and I'm gonna tell you how. But before I do that, let me read you this thing that I found on the, uh, I actually found it on the, the NIDA website, the uh, National Eating Disorders Awareness website. And it says, LGBTQ plus identified folks experience unique stressors that may contribute to the development of an eating disorder. While there is still much research to be done on, on the relationships between sexuality, gender identity, body image, and eating disorders, we know that eating disorders disproportionately impact some, segment, some segments of the LGBT plus community. Wow, I can't talk today. LGBTQ plus people face unique challenges that may put them at a greater risk of developing an eating disorder. Research shows that be, being beginning as early as 12 years old, gay, lesbian, and bisexual teens may be at higher risk of binge eating and purging than heterosexual peers. That's really interesting to me. Um, potential factors that may play a role in the development of an eating disorder may include fear of rejection or experience of rejections by family, uh, by family, friends, and coworkers, internalized negative me messages and beliefs about oneself due to sexual orientation, non-normative gender expressions, or transgender identity, experiences of violence and post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD) which research shows uh, sharply increases vulnerability to an eating disorder. Interesting. Um, discrimination due to one's sexual orientation and or gender identity, being a victim of bullying due to one's sexual orientation and or gender identity, discordance between one's biological sex and gender identity, and inability to meet body image ideals within some LGBT plus cultural context. There really hasn't been a lot of research. What they said was, um, research remains limited on eating disorders among LGBTQ plus populations. Existing research shows that in one study, gay and bisexual boys reported being significantly more likely to have fasted, vomited, or taken laxatives or diet pills to control their weight in the last 30 days. Gay males are thought to only represent 5% of the total male population, but among males who have eating disorders, 42% identify as gay. Why? That's so interesting, why? Gay males were seven times more likely to report binging and 12 times more likely to report purging than heterosexual males. Compared with heterosexual men, gay and bisexual men have a significantly higher prevalence of lifetime full syndrome bulimia, uh, subclinical bulimia, and any subclinical subclin eating disorders. These are really big words for me, so. Females identified as lesbian, bisexual, or mostly heterosexual were about twice as likely to report binge eating at least once per month in the last year. Elevated rates of binge eating and purging by vomiting or laxative abuse was found for people who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or mostly heterosexual in comparison to heterosexual peers. A sense of connectedness to the gay community was related to fewer current eating disorders, which, suge which suggests that feeling connected to the gay community may have a protective against eating disorders. Interesting, why? 
So that's just a few of the things that I found. But if you wanna go look more into it, just go to Google and I think I just typed in LGBTQ and eating disorders or something like that. And I'm sure you'll find a lot if you wanna know a lot more. Um, so that's what I found online. So what I wanna do now is I wanna share with you my experience with this. And I'm doing this because I don't have a lot of the answers about, about myself. And so maybe someone out there can help me with this and then you guys can help each other. I'm just gonna kinda share with you some pivotal moments in my life, I feel. So I started being attracted to both boys and girls pretty young. I was like five or six when I started being attracted like that. And I always had a crush on a boy and I always had a crush on a girl till the day that I got married. But I just remember being a little girl and you know, I'm, I'm a Christian and and I'm still a Christian, by the way. I'm still part of my church and I believe in it strongly. A lot of things were said in that community that was like, girls like boys and boys like girls, but girls don't like girls and boys don't like boys. Like these were things that I would be told. And so I obviously felt like I had to keep it a secret because I didn't want to get in trouble or whatever. And um, I, I, I feel like these days it's a lot different, but back then it wasn't. It was really hard to talk about back then. These days it's getting better, especially in our church. It's getting a lot better to talk about it and anyone is welcome at any time. That's why I love my church and it's the best and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the first thing that I realized was I remember looking at other girls. That's when I started to put on weight from binge eating. I started binge eating at five years old. I was being abused at home. I was being bullied and I started binge eating and I gained a lot of weight, which caused me to be bullied in school. And the first thing I remember that was a connection between the two was that I would start looking at girls that way and I would look at them so much and I would stare at them and watch the way they walked and looked at their bodies and their butts and everything and thought they were cute and their hair and their eyes and everything like at such a young age. And the problem with that is that I became obsessed with their bodies and I started comparing my body to their body. So I would look at their bodies and think, oh, she's really attractive. And also, why doesn't my body look like that? Like, why is my butt literally twice the size of hers? Like, this was as I got a little bit older. I just remember thinking like, why, wait, why am I different than this person that I like? And why am I attracted to s skinny girls? Like, you know, like that was the very first time that kind of like hit me where the two connected. And all it did to me was, just like with a lot of other problems, it made me go to food for comfort. And it made me hate myself more because I couldn't stop going to food for comfort. So it was kind of like this vicious cycle of, okay, th these things kept happening, something hard would happen at home, and then, and then I would rely on my friends, and then I, I would get crushes on a lot of my girlfriends, and, and then I would beat myself up about it, so I would eat more, and then more things at home would happen. It just was like a really nasty, little vicious cycle. And that poor little girl, when I think about her now, like a few years ago, just a few years ago, I would not have said this, but um, over the past year or so, I've just been thinking a lot about that little girl, little Shani, that was in so much pain and felt that she had to hide who she was and felt that the only way she could cope was to go to food and then later doing other horrible things to her body. It's just really sad to think about. The pain that so many of us go through is so unnecessary and it's just something that if we could just find the strength within us to talk about it and let it out um, to anybody that you feel safe with. And if that's not your family, your partner, find a counselor, find a therapist, find a friend, anybody, just get it out of yourself. Do not hold it in. It'll turn into really bad things. You'll start to hate yourself and then you'll start to treat yourself poorly. And that's the last thing that you, sorry. That's the last thing that you or I or anybody needs because um, we're already hurting enough. And I love you and I'm sorry that you're hurting. And I hate this world that we live in. It's an evil, evil place, but it's also a beautiful place with people like us who will love you no matter what unconditionally and I'm one of those people. So every time I had a crush on a girl, I would over react, over act, I guess, over dramatize how much I liked a boy at the time, um, just so that nobody would catch on. And what ended up happening near the end of my high school years was I started 
falling for guys that were gay and they weren't out yet. The, I have two in mind especially um, and they were not out yet, but like I kind of knew, and I'm sure they knew, but they would get made fun of at school and I would stand up for them and stuff, but of course the thought did cross my mind. And I just find that really interesting because I think it was like, here's what I think, okay? I truly believe I was born bisexual. I was born attracted sexually to both men and women. Um, as I got older, I got s safer. Does that make sense? Men who were gay, I, th I feel, were safe to me because they wouldn't do anything to me sexually and I had been sexually abused. I was afraid of being sexually abused. I actually didn't even have the biggest memories of me sexually being abused at the time yet. I didn't get that talk after I got married, but some of it I did, and I was terrified that that would happen to me, um, and I know, never knew why until later. So I, I would be attracted to men that were really feminine, um, and not every man that I dated in high school was gay, but they were all feminine or sensitive or something that's just not, you know, the butchy, male, which doesn't exist these days, but in my days it did. Um, which is why it was so weird when I met Danny, because that's how Danny is. Danny is the manliest of, of men, and he's one of those typical guys, if you were to stereotype, which none of us do anymore, thank goodness. Well, some people still do. But if you were to do that, he would be considered a typical dude's dude or a guy's guy. Like, he loves to play with guns and build things and be the protector and do and all the things anyway and I love him so much but that's why it was so unexpected that I fell in love with him but I'm glad I did and I'm kind of grateful that I didn't come out before that because had I done that I could have ended up marrying a girl which would have been fine but it's so hard for me to say that because I cannot imagine my life without Danny he is the best thing that's ever happened to me I do not deserve him but I am so, so grateful to have him in my life, so I'm happy that it worked out that way. And then after we got married, sex became really hard because I started having flashbacks of being sexually abused, and I also had a hard time uh, with other things in sex and, and uh, getting me to the place that you need to be for it to work, if that makes sense. It was really hard for me because I was holding in this secret, and I knew that it wouldn't affect me if I would just tell my husband about it, but I didn't get brave enough until uh, a couple years ago now, I think. So for me, it's not like my sexuality, my sexuality, so my sexuality is causing problems in my marriage, but I don't know if it's, is it considered my sexuality if it's just about sex in general? Because now that's what it is. Like I hate sex in general, um, again, because of those memories that have come up and they come up really strong when I do try to have sex with my husband. And for me, I don't even have it that hard because it doesn't change anything for me. I already chose a man and married a man and decided to live that li my life with him. Whereas there are people who are full on gay that come from my church or any Christianity or any family that will disown them and treat them like crap. Um, because of them being gay, like, I don't know what that feels like. I don't know what I would feel like if I were fully gay. If I were, like, all the way gay, I would have to leave my husband because I wouldn't be able to love him fully, and he deserves somebody that could love him fully. So I do feel lucky that I was able to be smart enough at the time. I was so young. I was 19 when we got married, and I'm so glad that I took the time by myself to think about it and make sure that this was what I wanted and that he was the one that I wanted, and he was. Um, that's more the issue now than my bisexuality, especially since I've been out to my husband about it. I felt, I felt so much better, and I felt free, and I felt like I didn't have to hide this thing that, uh, in my case, won't change anything. I'm with my husband forever and I chose that and I'm the only one in the whole world that knew on my wedding day that I was choosing to marry a man instead of a woman. I was the only one that knew um, and it was a very internalized painful thing that I went through all alone um, and so I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> um, as soon as you can open up to your partner if you're in a situation similar to mine. We can hear you!
are we done or yeah anyway this video is like all over the place I feel like so I don't even know what I'm trying to say I guess just hi I'm Shani I have an eating disorder except I'm like behavior free for a really long time like it's been like 57 days now is that right I don't know and I'm bisexual and I hid it for the first 33 years of my life and I came out to my husband and I came out to my very conservative Christian family and I can tell you that not one of them loved me any less uh, and I was afraid that would happen I was afraid they would disown me or that they would not love me and a couple of people had a hard time with it but they didn't stop loving me really take advantage of the fact that in this day and age it's easier and it's never easy but it's easier than it was and take advantage of that while you can um, and talk about it because I would rather you come out to your parents or your spouse or whoever you feel you need to come out to I would rather you do that than bottle up your feelings and then have them come out in self-harm either by binging and purging or starving or cutting yourself or any type of behavior towards yourself that isn't kind. I really want you guys to open up a conversation in the comments about this. If you have any questions for me specifically about anything I've talked about, let me know because maybe I'll do like an LGBTQ plus slash eating disorder Q&A or something. I'm not going to I'm not gonna know facts, like I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, but um, but I have talked to my therapist about this and I've talked to doctors about this and I just have a lifetime of experience from my point of view. So if it's something I can answer, then I'll try. And if it's not, then we can just um, have an open conversation in the comments of that Q&A video if we need to. So leave me questions if you need, if not, other than that, if you have anything you wanna talk about about this topic, please talk about it in the comments below and keep it respectful. Please try and respect other people's beliefs. I hope you'll respect my belief. I, I do my best to respect everybody else. My belief is that I believe in Christ. I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I believe in Christ, I believe in love, I believe in forgiveness, and I do not believe that if Christ were to come and work, walk on this earth again, and he was presented with two men, one was straight, one was gay, he wouldn't pick the straight one to hug. He would go to both of them, and he would hug both of them, and he would love both of them, and he loves all of us, no matter what. If you're black, white, purple, orange, yellow, gay, straight, bisexual, trans, whatever it is that you are, I, I, what I know of Christ is that he loves me and that he loves you. And I think that's a beautiful thing. But I also respect other people's opinions and other people's beliefs. And so if you don't believe in Christ, that's okay. But for me, uh, it's been such a source of love and comfort my entire life since I was a little girl and I love it. So, all right guys, that's it for today. I will see you next time. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching, bye.